you can listen. Hashtag let them know. Uh, Donovan Mitchell said Sam Morell did not want to participate in the three-point contest because he wanted to spend time with his family, so he volunteered. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. That's camaraderie in its purest form. That's what you like to see. Al, when I was a little kid, the elementary school I went to had a septic tank fenced in near the playground, and a kickball went inside the fence, and one of the boys went over the fence to get it. And he walked out on the cover of the septic tank to get it, and the rusty metal lid caved in, and he fell in. The principal and a teacher jumped in after him. It was crazy. Yeah, you probably get the rest of the day off, (laughs) right? I mean, the principal, the teacher, and the student probably all take the rest of the day off. Alan, I don't know that Mary could tip a full porta potty. Like I wouldn't be strong enough. I mean, I assume that's what they're. I don't well, know. The if other guys I mean, could help me. Yeah. I don't know if anybody could. Well, I mean, if, if, it's, if it's real full, if it's real full of poop, it might be real hard for any of us to. Right. Do. If you're in one at a time, yeah. then the three of us could push it. And it doesn't have to be full. It just has it to just be has heavy to have yeah. with poop. Heavy with poop. It just has to be gross. Mm-hmm. Right. Here's the thing. Well, then we would need more. Alan, how about the winning team gets to fill it with poop? (laughs) (laughs) I saw a porta potty company in Florida whose motto was, you float them, we tote them. That's That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty. I could not get Gwen to finish the first episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think she's over it. Curb Your Enthusiasm, the final season started on Sunday night. And oh, I haven't watched that yet. We're watching the – we got about halfway through, and she's like, I, I don't think I can do this. He's, like, complaining about everything. I go, well, that's what the – I, I think, the show, yeah. Yeah, the bloom is off the rose as far as Curb Your Enthusiasm goes for a lot of people. Well, I uh, because it, I, that. I, I think Larry David is funny. You said the same thing, and I think you're right. I couldn't watch more than, like, one or two Yeah, at it a can time. be very monotonous because he's complaining – there's a there's a lot of the intertwining of the storylines in the show can be very clever, but the building blocks of it can be very monotonous. I just like Larry David, but I think she might be out. I have a feeling I might be watching this last season by myself. Did you see him on Morning Joe? No, I saw him choke Elmo on the Today Show or something, and that was he did that. But on Morning Joe, uh, who's the co-host, the lady Mika Brash- uh, yeah, Mika Joe's was wife. out. Yeah, he was at, She was out. And you should find the video because it's very funny because they're like, well, how old's your kid? And they're like, 28. And they're like, 28? It's an adult. You don't have to take off work to hang out with a 28-year-old on their birthday. Right. Because <laughs> Susie Esmond's with them, too. And it's- oh, oh, 51? <laughs> it's not a good record. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what you are? You are the New York Jets of television wow. awards. Oh, what a That's, that is what a cold, that is cold. What a wow. sick, sick man. I know. Yeah. I know. A sick, <laughs> sick, Mr. President, a sick white. A sick white. <laughs> what? That's, Don't make me say it. Don't, I know. You will say well, it. Well, because, I mean, so we're watching this last night, and I go, the show has been on, because all the seasons, obviously, are on HBO. Mm-hmm. The show has been on for 20 years. This is the 12th season. He takes time off whenever he wants. But you go back to that very first season, I'm like, see, he looks a lot younger. And Gwen goes, he looks exactly the same. She goes, he's always looked like an old man. I go, mm-hmm. well, but it's, you know, he was like my age when he started the show. Right. But uh, did he start with him saying that he took time off for his kid? Did I go past it? Uh, yeah, it's probably. Well, Larry could grow breasts. Cause... The thought of Larry with breasts. Uh, you know, you get pretty... It is back. The 12th and final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, a series that's been nominated for 51 Emmys over the years, premieres this Sunday. And joining us now, the show's Yeah, but did they win any? No, I was about to say 51. We may have won 22. Oh, oh, 51? (laughs) It's not a good record. All right, I I don't know where he's talking about. I saw him choke Elmo on um, uh, some show. I think he's like... It's just funny because it's a good point. It, you know, your daughter's turning, what, eight? Eight, yes. So you're taking the day off, spend the day for her birthday. 
28. <laughs> That's, I don't know if you need to. Oh, yeah, I call for it. 28. Well, maybe the kid's terminal or something. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. You oh, love Elmo, don't you? Oh, Elmo, are you okay? Gosh. Mr. Lloyd, Elmo liked you before. Ask permission. I can't even listen to that. That's it's so, so loud. God yeah. bless America. So, uh, yeah, no, we, we watched, because uh, we're watching True Detective. And I said, well, let's let's see, well, let's watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. She goes, okay. She goes, if you want to, okay. And so we watch half of the first episode, and she's like, I, I, I don't think I can do this. She's like, it's too much. It's him screaming and complaining. And, and um, minus the screaming, uh, it probably reminds her too much of living with me. Mm. So maybe that's, uh, I don't know. But... I'm not going to not watch the last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Good for you. I know. It's not for everyone. And over the course of, it, it's wild that the show is on longer than Seinfeld was on, you know? Right. But uh, it's time to be done. It's one of those shows that I'll put up with the annoying parts of it because when it does make me laugh, it makes me laugh so freaking That's hard. my take on yeah. it. I'm like, the payoff of this is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, J.B. Smoove, I mean, everybody around him, e even if you can remove, ironically, if you can remove Larry David from the equation, Garland's great. J.B. Smoove is hilarious. I mean, Tracy Ullman is his playing his girlfriend that he can't break up with, even though he hates her guts because, like, she's in recovery, and so he made a promise to her son that he wouldn't dump her. I don't know. All right. I sent you this on Instagram so you can play it because I, I really like it. Oh, okay. Well, let me give away this money. It's a thousand bucks. Last chance today for you to grab a thousand dollars from the Buzzard Bookie. So good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win one thousand dollars now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Check. That's check. Enter it now at WMMS.com. All right. Hold on. Can I ask a question? How old is her daughter? Uh, 28. So she has to be. It's not like she's 12 and she's celebrating a birthday and you have to be there. Yeah. 28, she's an adult. It almost sounds like a... She didn't really want to be here, I think. <laughs> okay, so that's Mika's kid, right? Because yeah. she and Joe Scarborough are married now. Yeah. Okay. His stepdaughter. Like, yeah, she doesn't want to be here. <laughs> Just Larry's face and everything. Well, who That's wouldn't great. want to be there? One of our New Hampshire Bureau Chiefs. You know, we have people who listen to the show on iHeartRadio from all around the United States and Canada. And we have Bureau Chiefs in just about every state. And we have a handful of them in New Hampshire. We have Michael who listens in Sunapee, New Hampshire. And Alana listens in Dover, New Hampshire. And there's a town called Atkinson, New Hampshire. It's a small town. There's about 7,000 people there. It's about an hour north of Boston. The town is right on the Massachusetts, New Hampshire border. And somebody sent me the story that people in this town are up in arms because somebody has opened an ABDL spa. Now, for those of you not in the lifestyle, those of you not familiar with your kinks, it's hard to keep up because they're always changing and evolving and sometimes devolving. That stands for adult baby, baby diaper lover. Oh, <laughs> Excuse what? me? Grown people who want to wear diapers like babies, right? Back in the day, you never found these people because they were in... They were in their homes doing this. And they were ashamed, as they should be. Pull the well, right, no, it. listen, whatever, you're not hurting another person. Whatever gets you off and is not hurting another person that doesn't want to be hurt. The point is these people have all found each other now because of chat rooms, the internet, whatever. And this little town in New Hampshire, Atkinson, New Hampshire, has opened a spa where adults can role play as babies. Imagine coming to the conclusion that this is going to be your, uh, this is your moneymaker. It's called the Diaper Spa. They didn't spend too much time coming up with the name. 
and it caters to people in the ABDL community. I just, I, I'm sorry. I can't get on. Listen, I'm with you. This isn't, I don't get it either. I already did this once. I don't want to do it as a grown man. But that's what I understand. Like, I, I feel like there's something missing because how do you find out that this is your kink? Like, what, what you about You see Taylor diapers? Swift on TV for 30 seconds during a football game, and you're like, I hate that. And you're like, oh, I think I want to wear diapers. <laughs> you know, I crap my pants so often when they show Taylor Swift during NFL <laughs> games. It really turns maybe, me on. I just, uh, yeah. I, I really want to live this baby lifestyle that seems to get me I so mean, worked up. I think people just want to be weird. I th- honestly no, think. No, they probably just want to be controlled. I feel like a lot of this comes down to that. That. I mean, some people get off on being embarrassed or whatever, but, like, treat me like a baby. I'm helpless. Control me. If this was your guy's kink, are you that indulging? I had to wear the type diaper No, no, he? that he is, and you, you, you're the, you're the you mommy. You're the mommy, and he is the diaper baby. No, I can't do that. You have to change it, but just pee, not poops. So if the diaper was how, hev- heavy how, with poop, it wouldn't. How good is this relationship? I don't know how good's your like relationship. Does, okay, I'm in this relationship with Brian, yeah. and 10 years from now, he comes to me and is like... No, two weeks from now. Oh <laughs> but, I mean, that does happen a lot, doesn't it? He's I mean, like, you've been in New York for a little while now, and I've really developed this uh, desire. But, you know, there th- that will happen sometimes in relationships where I, I think it probably comes out of boredom or whatever, but people go, well, um, it turns out I'm kind of into this. And then the if partner. If I'm with the person and I love them, then I'll do it. Yeah, the partner has to decide. Okay, I guess uh, if this is something that's going to make you happy, but I, 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 I want could... you to be but happy. After dropping logs, I couldn't do poop. I could do pee. I could probably do pee. Like if you, if I really love you, and like if Brian was like, this will be like my ultimate fantasy if you just do this for me. Can you do the other? That? Like, what if there's. I, I is it sexual? Things. Is this a sexual it thing? It is. It's considered a sexual fetish. But here's the thing. I don't know that it involves actually going in the diaper. Right. That's what I was wondering. Like, oh, are they, they just want to wear it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, let me, so let me lay this out for you. The diaper spa in Atkinson, New Hampshire. This is a small town. Age play friendly adult diaper spa. Safe and judgment free zone. Snacks, playtime, story time, All right, maybe cuddle the, time. Maybe, I mean, maybe once you get in there, it's judgment free. But outside of it, it is judgment heavy. Right. Like you, you to get to the judgment free zone, you have to walk through a very judgment heavy zone. Three, where everybody's like, "Oh, they're going to the goddamn diaper spa." <laughs> hey, you hear that guy? You know yeah. that guy just walked by us at Costco. Did you hear how he was crinkling? Mm-hmm. Guess where he's going? Crinkling in his pants. Yeah, but that also just might be some old guy that has a problem. Well, some people are into that, too. They like wearing diapers under their clothes because they like that crinkle. Uh, it's $300 an hour. Whoa! Virtual play dates are $200 an hour. Listen, you don't open this because you don't think it's going to make money. I mean, you can grift a fetish like nobody's business. That is so expensive. You can get an all-day premier spa experience for the little one inside of you. Yuck. This is, I can't. For $1,500. Oh, you're out now? too much. I can't treat you like a baby for sex. I can't. That's too much for me. That's like, makes me feel like a pedophile. Well, but this is for people with other people who like it. Yeah. (sighs) But that's what I'm saying. Like that. So, okay. So in this scenario... You say I can't do this for you, but you can go yeah, to the go to diaper spa. spa. Go to your diaper spa. But we spa, can still stay I together. I can't. I can't make this. If this is like the only thing that's gonna make you sexually happy, and every other part of our relationship is fine, go be a diaper boy. I don't know what to tell you, but diaper baby. Diaper baby. I apologize. In the summer, you can play with your water wings and floaties poolside. In the winter, we can make snow angels. Build snowmen. This is stuff I didn't do as a kid, by the way. Yeah, no one was thinking you were a diaper baby. <laughs> but like as a, you know, decorate gingerbread men and sugar cookies. Like what? These these are some people that probably had real tough childhoods. childhoods and yes, this is their way are, of like taking it back and, and I, again, whatever you do with your life that isn't hurting other people, that's great. But there's some damage inside this kind of thing. Um like clockwork, some local parents have flipped out because they think the spa is too close to a children's park. And, of course, everybody thinks that every fetish ultimately is distilled down to pedophilia, which nothing could be further from the truth. However, 
You this can understand. One? You can understand why some people might draw a connection to this one. Mm -hmm. She said that's something I'll never be able to expose my kids to. So now we will no longer be able to use that park. But if you're inside, it's not yeah, like they're not I don't think they're running outside. around. Yeah, running around the park in diapers. This looks like regular people going in. Spa, all, that, all the spa stuff's on the inside. Spa owner Dr. Colleen Ann Murphy is a board-certified integrative medicine physician and sexologist who recently settled in Atkinson, small town, and she said the spa is meant to be a place of healing for people who've experienced trauma. Childhood Nailed it. Trauma. We got that. We, we guessed that. Yep. Um... So, I mean, the bona fides on the one lady running it, you know, I mean, good for her. And anyway. Okay, but what, how far back? If you want to wear diapers, I feel like you don't even remember that trauma. Or it's not from their diaper phase. They just had childhood trauma that they have. Yeah, they kind of want to start over or something. They I don't feel know. feel coddled yeah. the whole day. Just, I don't know. I don't know, man. She like said this. she's removed a lot of the descriptive language from their website because she doesn't want any confusion or concerns from people. She goes, we don't do field trips. We don't take clients to the park. So she that's why it's so expensive. It's not like an S&M club or something. She's a doctor. She's, like, she's trying to get paid. She said absolutely no sexual interaction is allowed. So. I don't understand. But maybe you can meet this person there, like you meet your mommy there, and she then said you exchange numbers. Well, something? she said before anybody books an appointment, she screens them through the National Sex Offender Database. So she, she's doing as much yeah. diligence as you can possibly do. But you're not a sex offender until you're se a sex offender, <laughs> like. Yeah, no, but she's, but she's like, I'm not trying no to cater to wants. perverts, yeah. you know. I mean, she's not gonna let no trying one to wants develop them. <laughs> <laughs> I want to grow them organically yeah, here. Want, but in a, in a safe space where they can indulge in a healthier way <laughs> rather than go and act out in a d bad way. Yeah. Eh. Anywho. Uh, thank sure there's you somebody to, listening that is into this. And, you know, if it, it makes you happy, go for it. It's just, you know, it's a different is, thing. The thing is, I've heard of this. Like, there there are men on Grindr who take pictures of them in their diaper, and I just, that that's a bridge too far for me. There has to be a separate app for that. Kink. M maybe. K -K. But, like, but it's like old men wearing diapers, and I'm like, bro, like, are you, you lost control of, like, your bowels or something? Or Pure something. Uh, there's a, there's because they hit Say, me Kink up. Kink is just an old messaging app. But like, well, no. This guy who was a regular at my bar was having trouble with his wife. And, you know, people tell bartenders everything. And he was came in all upset one night, like, about to cry because he said his wife found his kick, K-I-K. -K, and I asked him what that was, and he said it was a kink site. Kink is not a – I've heard no. of kink before. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's like another app. So you yeah, that's like – Speaking of a different kink – I, he was like, she found my kink website that I had a profile on. Okay, yeah, that's different than kick. Kick is uh, like, maybe it was kick is just a messaging app. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think it was, was around anymore. K I K it used to be, but well, this was like ten years ago. This is yeah. when I was bartending. Like, I don't want to say the place. I don't know if that guy still goes there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a regular for a long time. But, hey, uh, look out for this kinky dude at the winking, yeah. li the kinking lizard. <laughs> Wait, so then when his wife found out, she was like, She was We're upset done? because he said it was it was this kink that kind of like this situation, this kink that he was into that she didn't wouldn't do. So he was on this app. Dude, don't you miss the good old days where people were just into backdoor action? Now it's all this my extra queen stuff. Level. My wife found out that my kink happens to be sex with a whole bunch of women at one time. <laughs> right. And she's just not down. She said, What are we? Mennonite. <laughs> I got a break. <clears throat> anyway, congratulations to everybody engaging in their respective kinks. Don't let 